If you have a fear of flying, then this couch is the place to be. Fear of flying impacts 40% of the U.S. population, so it's pretty common. And about 5% of Americans have aviophobia, and it's as it's officially called, so severe they can't fly at all. Dr. Greg Jantz is yeah. back to help us overcome those fears, or at least hopefully get us to our next vacation not oh, too stressed. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> okay, let's just acknowledge right now the fear of flying is probably greater than 40%. People are concerned. That makes me feel better. And we're seeing things on airplanes that we haven't seen before. People are out of control sometimes. So yes. we have to factor all that in. But really, probably one out of six of us probably struggle just with the thought of getting on that plane. Absolutely. And what does that kind of look like with the anxiety? Mm -hmm. And how do you how can you tell, I guess, these are just nerves right. or you actually have a serious fear of flying? So if you're uh, trying to board and you just scanned your boarding pass uh -huh. and your knees get wobbly <laughs> and you start to break out into sweat and your vision gets blurry, oh, that's no. like a beginning of what we'll call a panic attack. Wow. And so for somebody suffering from uh, fear of flying, it really does have physical symptoms. So we want to acknowledge it is real. It's not just in your head. And sometimes we are, we are hard on ourselves. Absolutely. But let's just say your body's having a reaction to a perceived threat. Whether that threat's real or not, your body's still reacting. Oh my gosh. And I can say from personal experience, I had one, you know, scary flight yes. headed back here from Montana. Okay. And I think after that, that was kind of that real change in me. So right. is that normal? Do people usually, you know, start with this fear from a young age or can it kind of come on from, you know, maybe a flight with a lot of turbulence? Yes, two reasons. One is we could be going through a very stressful time and maybe we have a lot of chronic stress symptoms and we haven't been sleeping well. And all of a sudden, normally you get on a plane, you're fine, but all of a sudden you start having those symptoms. Mm. Okay, so your, your body's in a, in a fatigued state. You could be more vulnerable. Okay. Or, you've, or if you've had sickness, or if you've just started a medication, maybe ent entirely unrelated to anxiety, those could be trigger points. So there's always a reason, but the second reason is traumatic experience. You had a <laughs> flight, and it felt like maybe we're going down. Yes. And it felt very intense. Yes. Okay, so your body remembers that. Got it. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. And so you get into a similar situation and it just acts as a trigger. And you're, you're triggered. Now remember, it's not your mind, it's your body responding. Okay, and what can you do to maybe tone down some of these symptoms or anxiety? Is there, is there any hope for us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is hope. There is hope. I just worked with somebody recently who three attempts from the Denver airport, got on the plane, had a huge panic attack. Everybody in the plane was concerned about him. They took him off the plane before they left. Okay, he rebooks his flight for later in the day. I've got to get to Seattle because he's coming to get help. <laughs> okay. okay, same thing happened again. Second wow. time, the wow. plane pulls back. Okay, the third time he goes, I've got to get there, what do I do? And I go, remember, it's a very short duration. Mm -hmm. The symptoms may be there, but I want you to have a trusted companion with you. I want you to drink some water. I always drink water if you feel anxiety. I want you to have some protein. Okay, and I want your body to begin to settle. But no, 10 minutes, get past the 10 minute mark. You may feel wobbly. You may feel like you're having a heart attack. Let that pass. Get past those 10 minutes and the symptoms will begin to decrease. And take charge of your body. Oh, I like that. I, okay. had, I had him do something that was really, really fun. I said, um, do you have a piece of paper? I said, I want you to write down, and, and I have it right here. I want you to write down three words as a reminder. I've got this. Oh my gosh, I, <laughs> I got love this. That. And when you start to feel those symptoms intensify on the plane, pull this out as a cognitive reminder. Oh my Intense gosh. Intense anxiety by bypasses this prefrontal cortex. This is where we make good decisions. And it, it triggers the old part of the brain, fight or flight. But just remember, let some time pass. You've got this. Don't turn, yeah, no, maybe you want to have uh, alcohol. That's really not going to help you. Okay. Uh, have a few more glasses of water. <laughs> Chug some water <laughs> instead. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, dehydration yeah. could maybe be a thing that could help with It'll anxiety. It'll help calm the body. Okay. Okay, now, if you can get some ice, you get a little Ziploc bag, yeah. and you feel some symptoms coming on, 
Okay, take that ice, it may, and it may be a little tricky on a plane, but you can ask for ice. Um, maybe Especially if they see you sweating oh, bullets, yeah. maybe they're like, okay, no, we'll I, give you some ice. Okay, you're going to trick the brain. Take that ice, put it on your face, and just count to 30, 30 seconds. That realigns the brain, that coldness. Okay. See, you're taking charge of your body, and really, you're gonna take charge of your mind. But you gotta remember, you got this, it's not all in your mind, you're gonna retrain your body. Oh my gosh, and if someone next to you is having a react, what would yeah. you see if you're that companion that's supposed to you know, put them down, what are you looking for? The sweating, sweating hands? Yes, maybe rapid uh, speech, and, and you can tell there, there's some high anxiety. One of the things that does help, switch, to make sure you're breathing through your nostrils. Okay, three good breaths, let it out. Just keep focusing on breathing through your nostrils. We tend to hyperventilate, and then mm. all the symptoms get worse. Yeah, okay. definitely. And what, when do you go and see a therapist? When does it get to that point? Well, if I end up, I can't travel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or I realize that anxiety is passing into different areas of my life. Okay. Um, I had an example, a gal who said, I got, she got stuck in the elevator intense anxiety. Everything was okay, but the next day she came to work and she goes, I couldn't press the elevator button, right? She goes, so I did the escalator, then I got halfway up the escalator and my knees were wobby. She goes, because that anxiety started to infiltrate her entire life. And, and eventually she said, I couldn't go up over two stories. I just had too much anxiety, okay? So, by the way, her victory was the day we took her down to the Space Needle and oh, she did the outside elevators waving at us. Oh my gosh. So you gosh. can conquer this anxiety. You've got this. Just <laughs> you got like this. you said, I love that. Thank you for <laughs> yeah. being here.